to me, uh, human interest, cultural interest in the supernatural ha always has to do with borders in some sense. Uh, the supernatural for me is a threshold space um, between what can be sort of empirically verified and something which is so deeply um, beyond our ken that there's no point in even thinking of it. It's literally unthinkable. Um, and so this idea of limit really is dramatized nicely in the case of the uh, Cottingley Fairies, which had its centenary last year. It was a story of two girls in Yorkshire in 1917, and using very rudimentary techniques, they tricked sort of many people, including uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, that the fairies they'd drawn and put on hat pins and then taken pictures of themselves with at the bottom of the garden were actually moving. Um, and there was a whole, s it became sort of a very famous hoax at the time. And one of the reasons people speculate that um, Doyle was so fascinated with this was that he had a dog in the race in terms of the supernatural, meaning that he'd lost a son in the war, and he had a huge vested interest in being able to communicate with the other side. But what's really most interesting about this is how the two girls uh, grew up into women and responded to it in old age. And I've, I, I read the interview that Elsie Wright, one of the girls, gave in, the, in 1985. And there were a couple of things that she said. Um, she said that the Ultimately, the pictures were photographs of my and my cousin's imagination. And I thought that was a lovely way of hedging it. It was, that was, the ontological question, are fairies real or not, didn't even apply to them. You know, it was, it was the wrong sort of questioning. Um, and she said, she was sort of pressed, well, did you fake it, did you fake it? And she said, I'd like to leave that open if you don't mind. The questioner asked one more time, and she said, let's close it with that. And I love that two little, almost that, d that couplet at the end of leave it closing on an opening. And that's sort of the threshold space that I think the supernatural uh, in our imaginative lives always occupies. If you look at fairy law, it's always, you know, the fairies will come on solstice days or days where, uh, at times of twilight, where the, our world and their world, the borders between are thinning. Um, and I think what's most attractive to us, and that's what I'd like to sort of put forward today, is the way in which the supernatural is always a confounding of categories. It's a neither nor space. Um, the Gothic uh, liter literary tradition in the 18th century was all about sort of the idea of the ghost who is there or not there, or the werewolf who is neither beast nor human. And I think there's huge pr uh, imaginative productive space that can come from these sort of borderline um, border phenomena. And there's obviously something we get out of it. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.